a team focused on rebuilding the economy and restoring our democracy. This is the United National Congress. Six years of being in charge of the country, six years in charge of the treasury, and six years of power, the Prime Minister blames the citizens of this nation for failed diversification. It is not we the people in charge. In the image of the United National Congress, the Member of Parliament for Pointe Pier, Dr. David Lee. Friends and supporters, Tonight, our nation continues to exist in a constitutional crisis with, the police with no police commissioner, no police service commission. While there are those who disagree with the opposition's actions, one thing is clear. Our determined actions continue to highlight a fiasco that is of great concern to many in our society. While the president is proceeding along with appointing new members of the police service commission, as if, there is the end, as if this is the end of all solutions to this crisis, our news continues to be filled with concerns of citizens who desire to know the truth of what really occurred. As Justice Sipasad said in yesterday's Express, the Sunday's Express, recent events relating to the appointment of a commissioner of police have raised in the minds of many citizens a desire to ascertain the truth as to what transpired and may that the various public officials who may have been involved in the situation which ensued short, should clarify the events which unfolded and exercise ownership over any inappropriate exercise of discretion or constitutional overreach. These are, are the words of the learned Justice Frank C. Passad. It is clear, in my view, that our nation is now suffering from a presidential dereliction of duty as Her Excellency refuses to address a situation that has left a moral scar on the public integrity of our nation. People don't simply want new appointments to the Police Service Commission. They want answers as to why the entire board collapsed placing this nation without a police commissioner and a police service commission for, this, for the first time in our country. Citizens don't only require new names to be sent to Parliament, Madam President. They want to know why you failed to send the original merit list to Parliament to be debated, Madam President. Madam President, most of all citizens want to know why you, as our head of state, disregarded the laws which you are supposed to uphold with distinction. Tonight, I remind you, Madam President, of your New Year's 2021 message to us when you said, and I quote, public officials have to stop being so secretive, paranoid, and dismissive of the anxieties of our citizens. They make decisions and take action under our authority and on our behalf. And we are therefore entitled to be kept in the loop about relevant developments. These are your words, Madam President. You are asking about accountability and this country now is asking you about accountability. That is what the people of this nation require from you. They do not want this matter swept under the carpet or to go away. Citizens want to know that the highest office in our nation could be above partisan politics, uphold integrity, and be accountable to them. If we cannot trust the president to follow the constitution and to be honest with us, then who can we trust? The president, in her public statement, told us that on the 11th of August, 2021, she received the order of merit list for the post of commissioner of police. And almost immediately later that day, the list was withdrawn by the police service commission. As a former judge and legal luminary, the president would be fully aware 
that enshrined in the Constitution is a requirement that once you receive the merit list, it must be forwarded to Parliament for debate. Nowhere in the Constitution are there any provisions to return, withdraw, or hold back that merit list. By the supreme law of the land, once the president receives the merit list from the Police Service Commission, you are duty bound to submit it to the parliament for debate. Is that what her, ex her excellency did? No. How could the president allow the chairman of the Police Service Commission to come back on the same day, August 11th, and request back the merit list. On August 11th, they drop off the merit list, and Blissy Passat came back for the merit list. The Constitution gave the president no discretion to adjust, withhold, or circumvent the process. Her role was simply to pass on the merit list to us in Parliament. However, by allowing the list to be withdrawn, she purposefully, in my view, violated the Constitution. Had the President been focused on upholding the Constitution, she would have prevented the withdrawal of the merit list, which became a constitutional instrument once presented to her. For the President to lose custody of a constitutional instrument, that is the merit list, is a clear indication that she breached the prescribed constitutional process. The president simply telling the population that the merit list was withdrawn is a brazen, irresponsible act because she must have been able to account for why this merit list was taken back by the chairman of the PSC, Blissy Passad, chairman of the Public Service Commission. Madam President, the merit list should have never left you. It should have never been sent back. However, unable to tell the population why the list was withdrawn from her custody, the issue of collusion arises. Was there third force pressure put on by both, on, put on, on both Blissy Passad and you, the president, to pull and hand back that merit, merit list? The population must not forget the statements of the Prime Minister last month when he admitted he had written to the Public Police Service Commission one year ago to express his loss of confidence in the Police Commissioner, Gary Griffith. I wonder who had topped the merits list. Was it Gary Griffith? Let's look at the acting merit list that was delivered to the President on August the 12th. In the President's public statement, she states that she received the merit list for acting commissioner on August 12, 2021. However, she became concerned about legal notice 183 and I think section four or paragraph four. How could the president become concerned about the legal notice 183 as it pertained to the acting position yet did not express the same concern for the merit list for the commissioner when that was submitted on August 11, 2021. As a matter of fact, it was the opposition who raised concerns about legal notice 183 back in July in the Senate. And then it was Wade Mark, our senator, raised it, but not a single independent senator raised a concern in that debate. This entire fiasco smells of political vendetta, all in an effort to prevent a police commissioner who not only had topped the merit list, but also had massive popular ratings from moving, for moving forward. Former chairman of the Police Service Commission, Blissy Passad, must answer if she eroded the independence of the commission by acting contrary to the decisions of the other members and only sought to execute the political directives of the government. We must never forget that Bliss Sipasad served as a political appointee, as a member of the CDA, Chakramas Development Authority Board, 
indicating that she has some, and that indicated to us that she had some form of allegiance to this government. Blissy Passad must tell the country on what basis and board approval was she allowed to withdraw that merit list for the Commissioner of Police on August 11, 2021. One month ago, we saw the entire Police Service Commission collapse with every single member resigning. We must not forget that. Every single member has resigned. That tells you that process of appointing a new commissioner had become so toxic with political contamination that the other police service commissioners refused to be part of the process. We must never forget Courtney McNish, reportedly first commissioner resigned over Blissy Passad mishandling of Gary Griffith's suspension. Then came the resignation of Susan Craig, second commissioner, and Roger K. Wal Singh, third commissioner, and then also the chairman, Blissy Passad, also tendered her resignation. Today, as Her Excellency begins the process of appointing a new police service commission, she must know that the entire collapse of an independent body which was created to protect the police service from political influence cannot be swept under the carpet by simply appointing another commission. She had a responsibility to investigate why this commission under Blissy Passad collapsed so rapidly. There must be answers as to whether the government breached the separation of powers and tried to influence an independent body. There must be accountability on why the commission collapsed and the list was withdrawn. But these commissioners resigned as they refused to be part of the government's attempt to manipulate the Police Service Commission. What is the role, I ask, that the president played in all of this? And these are the questions that we demand answers to. With such damning questions hanging over the highest office in our nation, it is no secret why your elected opposition was deprived of debating our motion for an investigation into the conduct of the president. Having colluded with the president to breach the constitution, the only step left was for the government to collude in the parliament to silence the opposition from debating the truth. Your opposition was not shut down because our motion didn't allow for debate. We were denied our right to speak because they wanted to ensure the greatest attack against our constitution went unchallenged. We were silenced in the parliament because this government wanted to cover up their manipulation and interference within the enshrined independent entities. Tonight, I reject the calls of those who said our behavior was unparliamentary, unruly, and undemocratic. Our actions were the highest form of patriotism as we displayed that not only would we defend the Constitution at any cost, but we would stand up to all those who seek to destroy our parliamentary democracy. Our actions were not motivated by politics, but were driven by knowing that the foundation of this nation is its laws, and those laws must be respected by all, even the president. Our actions so far have proven that we were right, given that there have been significant questions raised by individuals such as Martin Daly, Ramesh Leo Saran, and Justice Frank Sipasad. We have been proven right, but yet condemned for our actions. Had we not un undertaken these actions, these breaches of the Constitution would have gone unnoticed. Drastic measures are required to be heard, and there is no greater time that calls for drastic measures than the breaking of our constitutional laws. To those independents who labeled us as a fish market or threatened to take us to the privileges, are you just there to whisper amongst yourselves? If your only role is to rubber stamp the decisions of the government, the role of the opposition is to stand up for each and every citizen in our parliament. Tonight, I ask those same individuals, where is your outrage for the parliamentary democracy 
when the government refuses to debate the budget? Where is your outrage when the opposition members are being insulted and shut down? Where is your concern when the opposition urgent questions and motions are denied? The greatest attack on democracy is the leadership of this government who continues to neglect and suppress the people of this nation. One would have thought that Senator Vera would have agreed with the opposition. I was taken aback by the disparaging remarks made by Senator Vera in the media against our actions because I thought he, above all other independent senators, would have supported and un understood our position. In November 2020, Senator Vera bought his own private motion calling for the reform of the service commissions, specifically listing the police service commission based on their role to protect against political influence, amongst other things. He argued in the Senate that they must all support his motion to strengthen and rejuvenate these commissions. Tonight, I ask Senator Vera, having argued for such protection, for such reform and rejuvenation months ago, yet when one of the very institutions fell into unparalleled disrepute as never seen before, where was your vote? The opposition's constitutional motion was based on the premise, on the premise that the Service Commission constitutionally instituted to insulate the function of the police service from political interference had been tarnished and as a result required urgent debate as well as investigation. The opposition's behavior was undertaken to protect the severe infringements against one of the very service commissions which the senator highlighted in his motion from being swept under the carpet with no debate or parliamentary oversight. My brothers and sisters, as I come to a close tonight, we are seven weeks before Christmas, and the government, is, this economy is in turmoil. And it is clear that this government has lost their will and ability to lead this nation. As the member of parliament for Point of Pierre, I stand fully behind the leader of the opposition, People's October Revolution campaign. The People's October Revolution is being fought for every Petrotrain worker who has lost their job. The Petrotrain pensioner who is unsure of a pension. The People's Revolution is being fought to ensure the energy sector and industries such as Point Lisas, as well as companies such as NGC, which lost billions under this government, can become stable contributors to this nation's growth once more. Two weeks ago, we demonstrated to the nation that we will not be bullied in parliament. The People's Revolution is a demonstration that will fight for every community in this nation for a better country. One such community I want to stand up here for tonight is my community in my point of view, Bellevue community in Windsor Park, which has been abandoned by this government that has faced further disaster. On September 15, 2021, four families home had their entire lives disrupted with one family losing their entire home and three facing the same fate due to the state-sanctioned quarrying at Cocoa Road Sandpit. I'm calling on the Minister of Agriculture, Senator Rambarat, to tell the residents why despite his commitment to stop all quarrying activity until a proper report has been done, they have resumed quarrying, causing the homes of these residents to be further destroyed by further land movements. I'm calling on the Minister of Social Development as well as the Minister of Housing to tell us why, despite the promise to provide housing accommodation for residents in Bellevue on the 19th of September, none has been provided to date. Why are these families being ignored? Why are these families not receiving assistance as some of the families do in government represented constituencies? Brothers and sisters, our nation facing very dark days given our na national state of affairs. However, this week, as we all as a nation have the wonderful festival of lights, Diwali to celebrate, as I wish you all Shub Diwali, know that the United National Congress will continue to fight for a brighter and better day for every citizen as we have the caring, experienced, and vis visionary leadership needed to rebuild our nation. I thank you and Shub Diwali.